Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Elegant Design Bureau in Kerbal Space Program 0.23, where I have a special surprise for you. I have been working on more planes, and this time it's not a space plane, it's just a regular plane, atmospheric and everything. But, uh, but it's not regular in any other way, so uh, let me just show it to you as we sort of move over here. It is an asymmetric airplane. Uh, completely asymmetric airplane. In fact, even the rudders are slightly different sizes. Even the horizontal stabilizers are slightly different sizes. And you can see the canards are different sizes. The only thing that's the, roughly the same are the landing gear. So yeah, I set this challenge to myself, trying to figure out whether such a thing could work in KSP. There is one asymmetric aircraft I know of in real life. It's the Rutan Boomerang and the reason it was created was because uh, Bert Rutan, the great designer, uh, said that it was more stable if one engine failed if it was asymmetric like this. Now that's not true of this aircraft. This <laughs> this aircraft will, will not be more stable than a regular aircraft if uh, one engine cuts out. I don't think that would be the case. But uh, that was the claim of the original Rutan Boomerang. For those who don't know who Bert Rutan is, he's also the designer of Spaceship One and Spaceship Two, he, uh, which are the aircraft, uh, spacecraft sort of things that uh, Virgin Galactic is going to use to send people into space for, I think the cost is $200,000 or something like that. So, uh, and that's not to orbit, right? That's just a space hop. But anyway, Bert Rutan is that designer, and uh, he designed all sorts of very interesting designs. And uh, here we are. Now, this isn't possible without a few mods, obviously. First of all, it's not possible without um, the tweakables, right? You can see that this engine is only uh, 5 eighths the thrust of this engine. So that's necessary. It's also not necessary without the the little indicators for center of mass, center of lift, and center of thrust. Those are very important for this. But um, it's also not possible without the procedural dynamics, which allowed me to custom craft the wings. And uh, stretchy tanks was helpful so I could custom length this pod. So I could uh, make sure that's the the length that I wanted. Uh, otherwise I would have to keep snapping, I mean, I could have just kept snapping on fuel tanks, I suppose. Uh, trying it out and stuff like that, but it's easier to just have it and then uh, uh, press R to change its length. So that's just helpful. Other than that... <clears throat> oh, I should mention, uh, accidentally, I, I wanted both liquid fuel and oxidizer here and here, but for some reason this stretchy tank only had liquid fuel in it. So, uh... So, I was originally going to make this a space plane, but because this only had liquid fuel in it, I decided that I guess I'll just have liquid fuel here too. Uh, that was a total accident, and I hope next time to design a space plane with, with liquid fuel and oxidizer and everything. Otherwise, there's not really much point to having the rapiers at the back, right? Um, yep, I think all the best has been spoken for. Let's uh, choose a crew. Now, I'm, I'm not going to risk anybody totally... You know, Bob, uh, Tom sounds like a good idea. Now, this is not a space plane, so we don't need Shelby. Uh, who's behind the toolbar? Uh, CamCal. Camler, CamCast. we got a lot of cams, don't we? Um, let's, let's maybe get rid of... Well, sorry, uh, uh, make use of one of them. Uh, Kamler Kerman will get the... I saw a new mod. I saw a mod that uh, uh, actually tracks their achievements. And I really want to get that mod. Uh, I'll, I'll test it out first, but um, it adds a little button to the toolbar and then you can see what, what the achievements they've done, how long they've been in space and everything. So in that case, I'd be able to choose the ones that are either least uh, experienced or most experienced, and it uh, shows whether they've been orbiting around certain bodies and stuff like that. It gives them little pins too, uh, badges. So yeah, anyway, that's another thing, but uh, that's popped up on the forums and I'm interested in trying it out. But first, let's try this out. So let's go to the runway.
Now, I wouldn't waste your time unless I already knew that this could at least take off. Obviously, I've done plenty of testing to figure out that this needed to be 5 eighths and everything, and that uh, otherwise everything was stable. Uh, well, more or less stable. It handles, like, really bad. But, but uh, the question is whether I can land this. And even, even at the best of times, uh, duplicating a landing is tricky. So, let's see. This is by far the most amazing design I've done in Kerbal Space Program. I... yeah. I don't think I've ever designed something quite as... I mean, you know, the space shuttle stuff... I mean, I, I haven't done a uh, really great space shuttle anyway. Nothing like, you know, the people who really dedicate themselves to space shuttles. Um, but... When I, when I came up with the Elegant Design Bureau, I was thinking of designing stuff like this. Stuff that uh, only somebody with some decent experience with aircraft would consider doing. So here we go. Rotating. And lift off. Gear up. You can see SAS is doing some work, but not too much. Here's roll, yaw, pitch. Uh, it, it's not a horrible situation. Uh, I, and even if it was, I would just have to correct uh, the thrust a bit. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a little bit of uh, something in my throat right now. Um, I don't think we really need this, because we're not going into space. Uh, we don't have the oxidizer, so... I think we're all right to have a clearer view here. I would like flight engineer though. So let's turn a bit. Now like most aircraft in Kerbal Space Program, even with FAR, banking doesn't do much. In a normal aircraft, banking is the main way you turn, but we still need rudder to do a lot of the work for us. But so far you can see quite stable, and of course I used the FAR stability derivatives to help me out to make sure that everything was uh, decent. And in fact this is as stable as the craft, I mean um, nominally, is, I mean uh, thanks in part to SAS helping me out here, uh, is as stable as the craft that I tried out in the last few, the SSTO that I tried out in the last few episodes. One thing uh, that's interesting is because I don't have any struts at all on this right now, the, the body and the wings flex like s really seriously. It uh, always worries me a bit seeing them flex like that, but, but that's a thing with this craft right now. I could put struts to fix that, but now you'll notice the rudders and the horizontal stabilizers and the canards are uh, are all procedural dynamics parts which uh, turn entirely that uh, really helps with control so are the control surfaces on the wings and there are there is just one control surface on each of the wings uh, and that's because I designed it at night when I was a little bit sleepy and wanted to get really wanted to nail it down and get a good flight in. Otherwise I would have tinkered more and put more more control surfaces for finer control. One good thing about this is that it glides really well. I mean it is, a, I mean of course it's got this huge wing and relatively light weight. Uh, so if I, well I mean I'm not going to do it while yeah, maybe on landing I'll show you some of its glide characteristics. We're not going slow either. I mean, you notice we're at point uh, seven Mach here. We're, we can uh, reach airliner speeds easily, even at, uh, you know, close to sea level here. So 
So I'm just turning around. I'm just going to do the normal traffic pattern, which is uh, go around and uh, try and land back at the KSC. I think I've at least demonstrated that it can turn, which uh, looking at an asymmetric design, you would wonder about, of course. So yeah, I can turn. It can't pull too many Gs, though. It can deviate from its uh, prograde vector a little bit. But I, I honestly, maybe it can do even more than I'm letting it do, but I'm not uh, interested in pushing it too much. Not just yet. I wish banking like this really produced the effects that I'm used to seeing with aircraft just so that I know that I've got uh, a good aerodynamics model behind me. I hope, uh, I hope that continues to be improved upon. Credit to C7 though, uh, who does the SAS and does love the intrinsic aerodynamics on uh, Kerbal Space Program because uh, SAS is doing a great job here, let's face it. Um, this would be, uh, well, let's see, SAS off. Uh, it's not too bad handling with it without SAS, but it, it's gonna get out of control pretty quickly. I'm gonna start, uh, as you can see, start having a little bit more, uh, more oscillation and more control issues. So uh, SAS is really essential here, and uh, it's nice that it can deal with such a difficult design. Uh, you can see there are actually two reaction wheels in this body, and one up front here. So even the uh, uh, even the reaction wheel situation is very asymmetrical and curious but SAS can manage to handle it so we're leveling out so that I have uh, enough distance to land here and since we're already at 5000 meters that's that's pretty necessary now with uh, just liquid fuel this thing is pretty uh, pretty efficient i would obviously be more efficient if I replace these with jets the rapiers aren't the most efficient thing in the atmosphere but um, but yeah we could probably I, I wonder if I should cruise around the world with something interesting like this That'd be a long, long thing, though, and not particularly engaging. I, I would have to have some topics to talk about uh, other than the aircraft. Otherwise, uh, otherwise there'd be problems. So I'll think about that, though. I don't know if anybody's thought up doing something like this in Curl Space Program. I mean. Obviously, uh, even at, at most I know about what goes on on YouTube, and even that I don't really keep track of too many people. And so, for all I know, somebody's tried an asymmetric design like this. If, uh, if anybody has, uh, do mention them in the comments so that I can take a look at what they came up with. Um, I am very interested in designs like this. Two things that I love, uh, forward swept wing designs for aircraft and of course uh, these asymmetric designs because they're really, these are really thinking outside the box. Of course, uh, actually, I uh, uh, right now this uh, just titled uh, ASIM One, but um, originally uh, when I was working on it, the prototype was uh, named uh, "Don't Try This at Home." <laughs> it, uh, so uh, 
So yeah, thinking outside the box is uh, great, but only if you have some experience with what you're doing here. Actually, it didn't take very long to design this. I don't think it took more than an hour to get this uh, from the time I started to design it to the time I was able to take off of it stably. Uh, yeah. It helps that the wing is very long and uh, relative to the mass of the vehicle, the control surfaces are quite strong. If, uh, if this was uh, heavy aircraft with smaller wings and relying more on its thrust to keep it stable, that might be a bit more of a problem. But here we are, level flight. I mean, uh, perfectly level flight almost, you know, uh, plus or minus a few millimeters per second. And uh, 300 meters per second, pretty much on the dot. It is uh, quite amazing, quite amazing. All right, I'm going to make uh, the turn back, I think. How far are we? Do we have anything? No, I don't think we have any assets there that could show us the distance. So, okay. I unfortunately cleared up some of the debris, otherwise if I had left launch clamps on the launch... I should always leave the launch clamps on the launch pad. Uh, just so that we have the distance marker for the planes. I don't know what's casting this shadow. It's, I think it's a procedural wings thing. I mean, I guess this, but I can't really see how it's casting that much of a shadow. Okay, let's turn away from the mountains here. Gotta watch those G-forces. So remember, I do have both far and deadly reentry on here, and the uh, G-forces will kill Kerbals if I let them get out of hand. Though, uh, though I think we're never gonna get too far out of range in, with this craft, so... Okay, I'm gonna switch chase view. I was uh, not in chase view because of course we were doing all sorts of taking a look at it and making sure that we were alright. But right now, we're on landing. I should probably install the raster prop monitor system in this so that I can possibly fly with the cockpit view. I mean, after all, I've, I've flown Flight Simulator since I was a kid, so... So if I had the correct instruments looking like they were in the right place in the cockpit view, I should be able to land stuff like this in cockpit view. You know, even stuff like this, which is a uh, strange craft indeed. I might even be able to do it better in cockpit view than uh, from out here. Just because I'm more experienced at it. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the engines now. Let's do some gliding. You can see that initially the the speed bleeds off quickly, but uh, it, it's not going to bleed off too much. Uh, it will bleed off what I need at least. Uh, so we don't have uh, air brakes on here, but, but we should be able to lose enough uh, speed in order to land.
and we can still turn without the engines. You can see uh, we are steadily turning here. A little bit of bounciness as you might expect uh, because all sorts of stuff needs to be corrected but I do have the runway in sight. Anyway, as you can see, very stable. I mean, no problems flying this thing. I should got to put a little bit more thrust now. We seem to be pretty far out. Still wish I had left some launch clamps there. Rendezvous? Does it have a no? Wondered if it had a KSC setting. Maybe they should add that. Just a landing a KSC sort of thing. But it would be a totally different idea anyway. It's not quite a rendezvous, is it? Okay, well, uh, I'll put the gear down. Still very fast for this sort of thing, but... Right now, at low speeds, it seems to need to maintain a certain amount of yaw to keep things stable. You can see a slight tick to the left there. Hmm, we seem to be getting SAS oscillations. Let me disengage SAS for a bit. And then re-engage so that resets a bit. Sometimes when you give SAS uh, large control surfaces or a lot of thrust vectoring, it uh, starts to oscillate. That's not really a problem or anything like that. Um, I think it uh, just need to be aware of it. Well, considering that it's handling pretty well, uh, if I don't make this landing, that's just me not being competent. So let's just see.
Okay, there we go. Let's uh, carefully apply brakes. A little bit of a rudder to make sure that we don't roll off the runway here. Okay, I think at this point we can just uh, go with parking brakes. So there you have it. Uh, I don't know, I haven't seen it before in KSP, but uh, may, uh, I'm sure somebody's tried it before. Uh, but an asymmetric aircraft design. And I think uh, given how well it worked, I, I should try more of such things as these. So... Uh, in addition to space shuttles, obviously. So yeah, uh, certainly the most interesting thing I've uh, done with aircraft in KSP. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.